married. He had a wife in Pueblo, Colorado. And when he left Colorado on that plane, he did not just simply call her up and say goodbye or give her a hug at home and head off to the Air Force base. He decided to say bye a kind of a different way. Like I said, my relatives are a little bit crazy. He called his wife and he said, go outside on the courthouse steps about noon. She worked at the courthouse in Pueblo, Colorado. He said, be out on the steps about noon. So at 12 o'clock she went out on the steps and he was leaving to go off to war. And he flew that 110 foot wingspan plane right down the center of Main Street in Pueblo, Colorado, right over the top of the courthouse. You see the little picture on the side? They used to paint pictures on the sides of their planes. The captain got to choose what the plane was going to be called and what picture it was going to have. My great uncle Brad's B-24 had a picture of Bugs Bunny on the side of it. And it was called the What's Cooking Dock. She said when that plane went over the courthouse, he was so low that she could see Bugs Bunny really clearly on the side and she could see the tail gunner waving at her and smiling as they went over the, over the courthouse. He was really low. When he got to the end of the street, he didn't pull up and head off. He pulled the engines back, he pulled the throttles back to make the engines backfire to say goodbye. Bam, 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 bam. The engines went backfire. That's a dangerous thing to do. Pull the engines back when you're that low. Well, off he goes out of Pueblo, Colorado. He's got to fly to Kansas. He didn't go up like a normal person would have done. A normal person would have gone to like 12,000 feet or whatever you're supposed to fly this plane at. He stayed below 500 feet all the way from Colorado to Kansas. He was flying so low over the farms that when his tail gunner was reporting to him that when they went over the farms, the prop wash from those four big engines was picking up the chickens and making them fly into the air and then setting them back down. He only decided to pull up. He flew that way for hundreds and hundreds of miles. He only decided to pull up when they accidentally knocked a farmer off his tractor. They went so low over a farmer driving his tractor in his field that the guy dove off his tractor. He thought he was going to get hit by the plane. He dove off a moving tractor. 500 feet. If, he, if a B-24 flew over this school at 500 feet, you would think the world was ending. Mr. Steve wouldn't have to clean the leaves out of the gutters for a year. He was a little bit crazy. And a lot of the things he did were probably pretty illegal. I don't think you're supposed to fly a plane that low over a town. <laughs> That's my great uncle Brad. Another guy that went into the Grandpa Jack character was my actual grandpa. He was born in 1911. If he was alive today, he'd be 103. 1911. Anybody heard of the Mentos and Diet Coke trick? Yes. Obviously. It's awesome. That's a picture of it. Here's a better picture of it. The one on the end is Perrier, sparkling water. That one is regular Coke, and then Sprite, and that's Diet Coke. There is something really weird about Diet Coke and Mentos. I don't know what it is, but... I don't think you should ever put either of them in your body after seeing that. Look at it, it's making it over the roof. It's crazy. Well, my grandpa was born in 1911. They didn't have Mentos and they didn't have Diet Coke. Right? He wanted some excitement when he was your age in the 1920s. Especially around the 4th of July. He didn't have Mentos and Diet Coke, he had this. This is called a carbide miner's lamp. And it's actually in the book. Carbide miner's lamp. You take calcium carbide, which is a black powder, and if you sprinkle water on it, or sprinkle it into water, it makes a gas called acetylene. 